In this video, we're going to cover connection and credential configuration templates. These are a useful way to streamline the process of creating the same kinds of credentials over and over. They can also help avoid human error. For this video, we'll use two different templates to build two configurations. First, we'll create a simple API configuration. Then, we'll create an OAuth 2.0 configuration with the same setup we did in the previous video to connect to a Google service. We'll also take a look at how the configuration templates work should we wish to create one later. We'll begin by navigating to Connection and Credentials, Connection and Credential Aliases, and creating a new record. We'll start by giving our alias a name. In the Configuration Template field, we'll click the Lookup and choose API Key Demo Configuration. Then we'll save. Here's where the template comes in handy. In the related links, we'll click Create New Connection and Credential. The template we selected already knows what to prompt for to create the necessary records. We fill in the connection URL from the Google Docs and the API key we generated on our Credentials console, and then click Create. Let's take a look at the connection record it created in the related list. Not bad. Let's drill into the credential and give it a little better name. Done. Now we're all set to create a YouTube integration using our alias that calls that credential. Don't forget, we'll need to create a new credential and new connection record should we decide to move our awesome integration to another system. Let's do another example using OAuth 2.0. We'll start like before by going to Connections and Credentials, Connection and Credential Aliases, and creating a new record. Give it a name, and this time pick the configuration template OAuth Authorization Code Demo Configuration and save. Like before, we'll click the related link to bring up the modal. Provide a connection name, connection URL, the client ID, and client secret. The redirect URL should be fine since it's auto-generated. And we click Create and Get OAuth Token. But as you can see from the pop-up window, it failed. The previous dialog did a lot of work for us, but it didn't have enough details to do the entire job. So let's close the window and take a look around. Let's start by doing a refresh on the alias form. Based on what we learned in the previous video, we can see we have a connection record in the related list. Let's open it and take a look. The credential could use a little better name. We'll come back to that. The connection alias is good and the connection URL looks fine. So let's open that credential record. First, we'll give it a better name and save. The OAuth entity profile seems to need a few updates as well based on the name. So let's click through to that and we'll fix the name and save. And it looks like the scopes below need help, but again, we'll come back to that. First, let's dig into the OAuth provider record. The client ID and client secret are okay, as is the grant type, but the URLs are no good. So let's fix those up based on the Google OAuth docs. Then save. In the OAuth Entity Scopes list, we'll take out the email scope that was put in by the template by clicking X and inserting a new row with the proper scope for our read-only contacts, and save. Now back to that OAuth Entity Profile, because it needs scopes updated too. Down in the OAuth Entity Profile Embedded list, we'll click the profile and open it up. In the Embedded list, we'll click the scope related to our provider, and save. Let's go test our credential from Connections and Credentials, Credentials. Open our newest credential record and get an OAuth token. Looks great. Next, let's explore how that configuration template actually did what we experienced. We'll navigate to Integration Hub, Connections and Credentials, Configuration Templates, and open the OAuth Authorization Code Demo Configuration record and take a look. The default data template field identifies which records and fields are created. From the JSON notation, we can see the credential record has a related OAuth entity. 
which has a related OAuth entity profile. The values for the fields on that record are easy to see here. Scrolling through the rest of the default data template, we can observe more of the default table structure. This is much quicker than creating all those records ourselves. The dynamic data schema field defines what appears in the modal when we click the related link, create new connection and credential. The name field is a dotted notation to the data in the default data template above. The post processing script allows you to do server side script after the records are created. The on edit script is used when a connection record is edited, sort of like a business rule. The most common use for this is when the connection is edited from the connections tab in Flow Designer. For a challenge exercise, try copying this configuration template to a new record and resolving the naming and scoping issues we corrected manually to make one specific to Google. So there we are. Configuration templates can help you save time and avoid errors when creating multiple connections and credentials for a given service. Now that you understand connections and credentials, keep watching to discover how we can apply them to the various web services.